Hey, Game Freak, I got a bone to pick with you. This thing, the type chart, it's broken. Trash. Some types are busted. Some types totally suck. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of it. This abomination has plagued the series for long enough, and I will stand for this imbalance no longer. That's right. I'm hanging up my hat. I'm turning in my Pokedex, and I will not spend another dime on Pokemon until the type chart has been fixed. You hear that, Game Freak? Not another dime. Now, you might think me a fool for believing that something this broken can be rectified, but when faced with something like this, what more can we really do but just try to fix it? So, Game Freak, allow me to throw you a lifeline. I am indeed not a fool, and I'll even do the work for you to prove it. Here's how Game Freak can fix the type chart. Richard, hit that intro. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, what? That type chart's not broken. I mean, sure, some types are a bit stronger than others in general, but the system as a whole still works pretty well. And you know what? That is a fine argument for you to make. Do you, I don't know, have any statistically backed evidence? Because I do. A Pokemon's type can have a major impact on battles from both an offensive and defensive perspective. They determine what types you are weak against, but since you get a bonus for using an attack that is the same type as you, it also determines what types you are strong against. Obviously, we all know this. So, if a certain type has a lot of resistances and is super effective against a lot of things, well that's just not fair! And on the flip side, if a type is weak to a lot of things and can't hit anyone for super effective damage, then you got something like Arbok, aka something completely useless. I mean, let's be honest, has a single person not in a Team Rocket uniform actually use one of these things? Uh, why? Why would you do that to yourself? What I'm trying to say here is, in order for a type to be balanced, it should ideally be okay, but not great in both offense and defense, or specialize in either offense or defense while sacrificing the other. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Is that a fair assessment? Great. I can't actually hear you, so I'm just gonna assume you said yes. So if we want to evaluate the general strength of each type, we need to find a way to compare these two things. And that's where our old friend, the decision matrix comes in. Not, not really, it's, it's just some addition that I did in a spreadsheet because I'm lazy, but remember those things? Uh, good times. I'll bring them back at some point, but not now. So, what's all this here? Well, basically, I listed out all 18 types in the game. Then, on this side, I wrote down how many types each one was super effective against, not very effective against, and what types they had no effect on. Then, I looked at each type's super effective score and subtracted the not very effective and the immune scores to get a new number. This single number represents the offensive prowess of each type. A positive number means a type is good against more types than it's bad against, which means it's generally a good offensive type. And, obviously, a negative number means it's bad, and zero means it's dead even. On the other side, I did the same thing, but with each type's defensive capabilities. I listed out how many immunities, resistances, and weaknesses it had. Then, for this score, I took the number of resistances, added twice the number of immunities, because taking zero damage is better than taking resisted, and then subtracted the weaknesses. For those questioning why I doubled the immunity score for defenses, but not for offenses, when you're attacking, if your type is resisted or has no effect at all, it doesn't really matter. You shouldn't be using it either way. With defenses, you can possibly negate a lot of damage if you make a good prediction and switch, or if they just don't have anything that can touch you, something like that. So I thought it was a little bit better. Feel free to disagree and yell at me in the comments, but you'll soon see that it doesn't really matter that much. Sorry, sorry, I just gotta... I, are you gonna... Oh! 
Hey, I know these call to action segments usually involve me performing some picture perfect wrestling maneuver on an animated subscribe button trying to get you super hyped into subscribing, but today I wanted to take the time to say thank you. You all took that little red button to Suplex City more times than I could have possibly imagined, and we just crossed 5,000 subscribers. Considering the fact that it took six years for this channel to crack 400 subs, not even a year ago, I genuinely never thought we'd reach this point. So, you know what? Today, do whatever you want to the subscribe button. You've earned it. But at the same time, 10,000 has a pretty nice ring to it, don't you think? I'll be seeing you again. Oh, all right, now we've got two scores for each type, one for attack and one for defense. Now, if we simply add those two scores together, we can get a final score for each type. One single number that represents how good or terrible a type is. And look, I even color coded them. Could a fool have done that? Any type with a score of zero is Thanos approved. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. For every strength, a weakness. And for every weakness, a strength. Dare I say, if a type has a score of zero, it is truly perfect. There are only five. Any type that's one or two points above or below zero is a little imbalanced, but nothing game breaking. You know what, I'll let it slide. Anything more than that though, we're starting to have some problems. Take ghosts, for example. With two immunities, two resistances, and only two weaknesses, it gets a defense score of four, a very solid defensive typing. So to keep it balanced, it should be about as useful as my assistant Richard when it comes to offenses, that being not at all, uh, but no, it's fine. It's just fine. And I won't stand for that. A useful ghost? <laughs> I mean, that's an oxymoron right there. You fools! Ghost is already pushing it when it comes to balance, but the steel type saw that score of four and thought, <laughs> I could do better, twice as better. We all know that steel is a very good defensive typing with a whopping 10 resistances, only three weaknesses, and sure, throw an immunity in there for good measure. Poison types were a little too useful apparently. Gotta nerf that Arbok somehow. And sure, offensively, it is in the red, but do you really think a minus one is enough to fix this? This? <laughs> no, clearly I'm preaching to the choir here, and you are all just as outraged by this as I am. Of all the types, steel, ghost, fire, and ground are in the most need of a good nerf. Looking at the bottom half of our list, we see that there are a couple of types in desperate need of something, anything useful to do. Normal, fighting, and psychic all come in a little below average, but I want to draw your attention to three types in particular. It makes sense that ice would be a pretty frail type. I mean, it's ice for crying out loud. But I always saw it as sort of the antithesis to steel in a way. Where steel was the all-out defensive type, ice is more of a glass cannon. It can dish out damage just as well as it can't take it. But looking at the numbers, that's just not true. It's super effective against four types, which is pretty good, but not very effective against four more. True, it is the only type that's super effective against dragons, aside from dragons themselves, so I guess it's kind of like the spy from Stratego in that way. It's useless in pretty much any situation, aside from felling a great beast of myth and legend, so I mean, that's kind of a cool niche until the fairy type came around and pile drove the ice type into a shallow grave of irrelevance. But ice isn't even the worst offender. Bug types are famously useless, not good defensively, even worse offensively. Uh, hey, Tajiri, if these games are supposed to instill in people the same joy you felt collecting bugs as a kid, then why'd you make all the bugs suck so bad? And why'd it take you 20 years to include one good bug move? But the worst offender, and one of the only types to be straight up negative in both offenses and defenses, 
is grass. You ever wondered why people hate Chikorita, or why Venusaur never got an OG game in the US, or why you love Sceptile as a kid, but every time you go back to use one now, you spend the whole time trying to convince yourself that no, 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 Sceptile's, it's still good. I mean, right? Absorb until level 30, that's, that's fine. It's, we'll make it work, and, and don't worry. We've all been there, and it's because the grass type is categorically the worst type in the game, with a score of a negative five. Now, you may be thinking right now, if we really want to be accurate about this, shouldn't we include more metrics like average base stats of Pokemon of each type, or the general strength of attacks, immunities to certain status conditions, stuff like that? You know what? That is a very fair question, so allow me to answer it. No. Looking at this chart, it's very clear that something needs to be done. Steel, Fire, Ground, and Ghost have reigned their terror over the Pokemon world for long enough, and the Grass, Bug, and Ice types need a serious pick-me-up. I mean, only a fool would let something this broken go unchecked for two decades, and I would rather be dead than a fool. Luckily, I happen to know a very simple way to fix this. That's right, it's time for a new type. If we simply introduce a new type that can counter our powerful types and is susceptible to our weaker types and make sure it's not too powerful itself, then balance should be achieved. So let's try and brainstorm what this new type could be. It's something that needs to be strong against steel, fire, ground, and ghost, but weak to grass, bug, and ice. Now, when I look at these strong types, I don't know about you, but I think about industry, mines, forges, and people who are salty about the fact that they died in some dumb way, and are always trying to get me involved in their problems for some reason. In other words, the hubris of humanity. On the other side, we have nature, life, and death. The natural cycle of the world, the changing of seasons, the circle of life, all that good stuff. So we need something that is strong against industry, but weak to nature. Something that humanity has struggled and failed to fight against, while nature has adapted to. And just like that, our new type is beginning to materialize. It's clear now that there is one type that will immediately solve all the problems with the type chart, and it's... But... But no. No, no, no. If, if that's true, then... Then I have been the fool. It's so obvious to me now. I don't know how I didn't see it sooner. All this time, I've been so focused on telling Game Freak how to fix their game that I didn't realize that they were already doing it. They've been one step ahead of me the whole time. Time. That's the new type. Something that nature has embraced, something that humanity has raged against to no avail. No matter how many buildings we construct or discoveries we make, we cannot defeat time. And looking at Scarlet and Violet, they were all about time. The Paradox Pokemon, the Professor, heck, even the DLC looks to be exploring the very concept of time. It would seem like my grand new discovery in this quest to fix the type chart wasn't so grand or new at all, and Game Freak might have been leaving subtle clues pointing in this very direction all along. I mean, look at Terrapagos' shell! Twelve shapes arranged in a circle? Like a clock? What else could this possibly mean? Were they just continuing the hexagon motif of the gem-like terrestrialization, and in order to complete the pattern with all 18 types, you would just mathematically need to have 12 on the outer circle and 6 on the inner one? <laughs> Don't be stupid! It was a clue the whole time! They've paved the road for me, and I just walked down it. Now, does it sting a little that Game Freak seems to have beaten me to the punch on my super cool new type idea? Yeah, maybe, maybe I was a little cocky and maybe I've made a fool of myself for overlooking these obvious, clear clues to the truth, to the future of this franchise. I mean, the turtle has got 12 things in a circle. It's so obvious. Yes, 
Yes, I came to the same conclusion eventually, but I went about it in the most complicated way possible. So, so maybe from a certain perspective, I'm not a fool. I didn't need the clues. I didn't need Game Freak to hold my hand and guide me to the truth. I found it on my own time. The 19th type, the great equalizer. In order to perfectly balance out the type chart, it needs to be super effective against fire, ground, and steel, but not very effective against bug, grass, and ice. And from a defensive standpoint, it should resist steel, ghost, and ground, but be weak to bug, grass, and ice. And you know what? Maybe throw psychic in there. It needs a little bit of a boost. And it kind of makes sense. You could argue that your brain losing track of time could be a form of defeating it. Heck, I sat down to write this video. Next thing I know, five hours have gone by and I realize I haven't eaten anything all day. So I'd like to see time do that. And you know what? Just for thematic purposes, maybe make it immune to fighting because try as you might, you can never fight time. Unless you give it a ring target and then feel free to drop kick time into oblivion. When the fairy type was first introduced, they went back and added the fairy type onto some older Pokemon to spice them up a bit. I could totally see them doing the same thing with time. Dialga and Celebi are obvious choices to get the time treatment, and I bet there's a bunch more you can make a case for. Let me know in the comments down below. I could also totally see them making a move like Trick Room a time move instead, you know, like manipulating the order of battle, moving things out of time. It makes sense. But beyond all that, old stuff, think of all the possibilities of new time-typed Pokemon. You can have Pokemon based on clocks. The possibilities are endless. People have been speculating about new types for years, but you all were too busy talking about your light types or your sound types that you didn't stop to consider the repercussions. I mean, Dark is barely scraping by as it is. You don't gotta give it another weakness, but me? I wasn't blinded by the light. I wasn't distracted by the siren's call of the sound type. I was no fool. I looked past the noise to see the truth. The only way to balance out the type chart for all time is with time. And to prove my non-foolishness, might I be so bold as to say my genius, Let's plug time into our type chart and watch those scores even out. Tell me, could a fool have done this? This, this, is, this is the new one, Richard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the numbers are, yeah, they're a little closer to zero. I, yeah. Mm? yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, the colors are all, they're, they're, are they all literally exactly the same? Has nothing, nothing's changed? But I, I, but I mean, it's still pretty. Shit.